All right, my guys. So, um, young speed test. All right. Step one. Get good. No, let me stop. But uh, generally, you're gonna have to. It's gonna be after. Bro, I can't speak. I had no sleep. I'm just up. It's like four in the morning right now. But uh, yeah, it has to be a track that you really know. But you can't just go on any track. And the whole thing behind that is that it has to be a track with, with a proper hairpin and proper coordinates that you can actually effectively use this technique on. You can't just throw it around every corner and be like, haha, I'm going fast now. But in reality, you're just slowing up everyone behind you because you can't just do it on every corner, bro. It's not going to work. And trust me, if you're watching that Mr. D or something like that, they have the right uh theories and uh and uh um, you know strategies and stuff that goes on and that this thing is based on clearly because you know it's based on real techniques and real racing that goes on in japan uh produced or whatever uh by kichi sutio dk dk himself but um isn't is this you know it's exaggerated in an SUV. Pretty much any anime based on anything in the real world will be exaggerated in an anime. So yeah, it'll have realistic uh, ideals or realistic ideas and into the anime because it's supposed to be based off actual illegal street racing in Japan that went on. But, you know, they finna have the wings and have the the long corners when they're talking to each other, blah, blah, blah. Mid drift talking to the audience, blah, blah, blah. It's just, that's just how an anime goes, bro. This is how it's gonna be. Now, what I'm gonna show you is how it really works. You feel me? This is my, my uh, tune for this first part of my Tutorial 200 class. But for this video, I think 225. And uh, 225 and around. I think this is this 96 is about 900 kg. That's about the same horsepower in a saddle Corsa for the A6 tune. But I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna just leave it at 225 the horsepower for here because I'm gonna show you why because um. It should help the car rotate more when you're on the gas. And there's a, there's gonna be like a limit to where the horsepower is gonna be messing you up. Alright, you see it slipped out there. But if I was at 200, it probably wouldn't have slipped. But you're gonna wanna control that with the throttle. Oh boy, I'm doing this a lot. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to warm up. I don't know, I might uh, transition to me being warmed up. Uh, okay, so I understood there, right? But I rotated a lot with uh, the throttle. But I didn't shift the weight enough to bring the car all the way around. Like, boom, you see, see it's, it's turning, but I just used the gas. I let go of the steering wheel, hold on. Whoa the controller and then you just have to master it bro you have to do it for a track you really know so you know when to get on the gas when to uh not counter steer but steer the wheel a little more the direction you're turning to help it rotate around so you're not counter steering but you're just helping the car along around the corner you know Uh, I kind of see it there because I gave it too much gas, but you get the idea. Oh, look, you see that was way faster. Oh, I'm rotating. Let's give it gas, give it gas. But you have to, um, you have to use the steering wheel in tandem. You got to be smart with it. You can't just be like, oh, no counter steering, so let me not touch the steering wheel. Like, no, if you need to correct it mid drift, or you, you can correct it, you know? 
but all right, let me try to set a time real quick. Because even though it's at like 200 something horsepower, I should be able to get under a minute. So every time I come from the set, of course I gotta adapt. See, it's not kind of steer, but you just help the the car along with the steering wheel. But most of the work is done with the throttle. You see how it rotated like that? You just help it along. Shift the weight, bring it around with the throttle. There you go. Ah, I'm up too late. Uh, but let's fix it. Let's fix it. Mm, rotating with the throttle. There you go. That's how you do it, baby. Oops. Ah, but you see, it's possible to get under a minute. This was a challenge that I was hosting before. Not many, not many really tried it. But I guess if they see this YouTube video, they'll know how hard it actually is. So, oh, we'll see. Because you have to hit these corners perfect if you want to get a sub one minute lap time in an 88.6, bro. Especially at, uh, at 225, well usually I use it at uh, 200 and I get under a minute, but you no, know, this thing only has like 200 horsepower. And you're trying to lap horse leaf in under a minute, you feel me? Ah, uh, I almost did it there. Let's see if we get it the next lap. No, use the handbrake real quick. Cheat, let's cheat. <laughs> Let's cheat. I had to cheat it because I messed it up. I uh, I was too late to bring the car around, so it was gonna understeer really hard. But it looks like we're beating the time right now. Rotate it. Uh, uh that time wasn't perfect, but we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Oh, uh, you see the ghost behind me. You see the ghost behind me. Oh, that was terrible. That was terrible, but we still- Oh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> More power isn't always gonna help you. If you wanna believe in me, try running a car with 500 horsepower against a car with 200 horsepower here. I mean, 300 horsepower here. And see who wins. Well, a car with 600 and a car with 300. Let's see who wins. I got the time, but I don't like it. <laughs> All right, I'll just stick with that. Anyways. Hey, you see, you see, you see? That's all it is, baby. Mm, you see how it just rotated? You just use the gas, you shift the weight, and you just let the car rotate, bro. Even though I didn't adjust that one corner, but you still see it, the same principle applies. But anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I 
the car rotate. Let the car rotate. There you go. Oh, let the car rotate. Yes, sir. That's how you do it. So there's no counter stair. Uh, all right, now I'll just do it intentionally trying to speed drift. But um, it really helps that you brake hard and use the throttle to uh, distribute the load of the car. To, then you, uh, <clears throat> then you can really like let the car sit and then just ride it through the corner. It's better to be steering towards the corner than away from the apex. You know, if you're steering away from the apex like this, or like, like that, you could snap. But if you can just shift the weight, let it steer like that. Ooh, you see, when you have to worry about counter steering, you might snap or something. But if you can just let the car rotate and you steer it like that, then you know that's that's golden. Uh, a little, you could, you know, a little bit of counter steer is okay. But uh, if you're trying to make it look pretty or whatever, you wanna show off that you're not kind of saying you just have to do it perfectly each corner which is pretty hard not gonna lie like so even then I was too late to get on the gas the front of the car rotated right that was just because of the weight but the second half is a throttle you have to use your throttle to rotate the car around the corner like boom like you can spin out like that so easily. So when you control that and put it around the corner, then it helps. You know, you don't have you don't have to uh, counter steer that much. And then at the end of the day, you don't even have to steer that much because you're using the back of the car to rotate. Boom, rotating, rotating. See, I, if I stayed on the gas, I would have just rotated all the way. See, rotate. Rotate. It's all. It's just using the weight of the car, bro, and using the gas the right way. But then, you know, to now make yourself look dumb, you're gonna have to do it at a corner that you know, like the back of your hand. In a car that you know, like the back of your hand. Otherwise, it's not even gonna be effective. Boom. A little bit of counter steer, minimal counter steer, speed drifts. You could do it uphill, I'd rather not do it uphill, or at least at the, the end of the apex maybe. Rotate, there we go, give it gas. Uh, a little counter steer there, a little counter steer. Whip it around. There you go. Like little taps, like a little bit of kind of shit is fine. But then again, like, you know, GT Sport doesn't have the kind of tracks where you can really see the benefit of speed drifting in, uh, in Togi. Almost no kind of shit there. scared to really put my foot down there oh mm, see the technique 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 There you go. You don't need a lot of smoke for it to be a drift. You're just whipping it around the corner. You just need that slow thing there.
Oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was me showing you guys uh, how easy you could snap the car if you're counter steering. If you're counter steering, you could snap the car like that. Boom, and that's scary. And so the benefit of the um, the zero kind of theory speed drift is you won't have a snap over here because boom you just use a throttle like that yeah you just use a throttle through the corner and you beat you yeah yeah buddy so here's the tune it's, it's supposed to be around 200 horsepower She's at uh, or closer to 200. Probably had more control over the throttle. That's another thing you gotta worry about. You gotta worry about your torque. Worry about how much your uh, your rear tires are spinning. If it spins too much, then you're losing speed. That's the misconception about speed drift. Is like some people can't understand that when you're sliding the car. How could you possibly be going faster than someone who's just gripping the corner? Because when you when you're rotating the car around the around the corner, it's not like you have the rear tires spinning quickly. It's just that you shifted the momentum around the car to the point where you don't need the front tires turning that much to get around the corner. It's not that you're just sitting there burning rubber, spinning the tires, and you're just way faster. That makes no sense. No, that's not that's not how it works. Just using the rear tires to rotate through the corner, just like you use the rear tires to push the car to go. That's, that's all you're doing. But instead of just, but instead of like what I just said, you're using the momentum and the weight shift and the throttle at the right point to where it's just before it spins too much that the car was just, the rear tires will slide sideways and the car will rotate around the corner. It's not spinning too quick. Oh, I'm spinning out. Uh, you're not counter steering like full lock counter steering like you would in like D1 drifting or something like that. It's just rotating the car with the back tires. That's all you're doing. That's all the, the speed drift, the zero counter steer speed drift. That's all it is. You get flashy, you can use counter steer, you can spend the rear tires more. But that's only if you know what you're doing. And that's only if you know you're gonna keep your speed up. But there's not that many hairpins in GT to where you can show that technique off. Dude, <laughs> like I would if I could. Maybe in the setup I could. But, but I can't really uh, stream whatever in a setup. I gotta figure that out. But in GT, this is like the best track. This and uh, Streets of Willow and other, let me see. This track, right? Horse Thief Mile is the best where you're gonna see it. Streets of Willow, too. All right, so you're gonna see the, the benefit and your speed drifting. So, once again, this is the tune. I'll put this here. Did you see? Right there. This is the diff. Again, I don't have the custom channels. I don't need one. When you do all that, I, I personally think that's just too unrealistic. If they had a uh, like five speed close ratio, six speed close ratio, whatever transmissions that you could buy and put it into the car, yeah, and then sure, I definitely would. But a fully customized like sequential race transmission, like no, you can't. <laughs> Who's gonna be doing that in the in the, in the street? The street race it probably you probably put like a whole full cage in the car and a whole uh custom transmission and everything and be like yeah bro let's race like nah come on man this is this is street video and racing culture but the high performance highly modified cars you can do in like special events where but you can make that clear though you can make it clear that it's highly modified race cars i mean highly modified cars against highly modified cars rather than just pulling up to the toge and battling people you know there's there's like a difference but uh some people don't understand that some people want to put racing tires on their cars 
some people just want to slide around because NSOD and think that that's what it was supposed to be. But no, they was just NSOD was highlighting car control. It was highlighting techniques that when people master the car control, they could, you know, manipulate their grip and make the car do what they want, you know, and make the car rotate through corners and make it easier on them so they don't have to stare that much. That's how things like the gun take death match. I saw things like uh, God Hand, he could uh, use his uh, multiple line theory and all that stuff because they could just rotate the car at the edge of the grip, manipulate the grip that they have available and just slide through around the corners with the slip angle and all that and they'll be fine. And But Anusha D is like hyping it up and you see all the smoke, blah, blah, blah. You see them going through hairpins, blah, 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 looking all fast. Oh yeah, and that's another thing. Actual, like, actual toge, bro. Like when when they're racing, well, depending on the on the pass they're racing or whatever, it's not that fast. Like it doesn't look that fast because the hairpins, whatever they're going through, is only like around 30 miles an hour or, or less or something like that. So you know, if you had a bird eyes view on the on the track with a well, I guess at the right service speed or whatever, you'll see it won't even look that fast. It's just especially in the rain. And the rain is gonna look slow. That's I think they brought it up in initial D one time when they was having a race with KSK and uh, I think another guy in the SUK or something. They was having a race in the rain. I think there was fog too or something. But they was like this looks slow or something. It was like but it's still an intense battle and a lot of people was gonna think it looks slow. Y'all could quote I don't know if y'all wanna quote me on that, but y'all could go look it up. Cause they mentioned and SUD mentioned a lot of things that was realistic. That was very important, but you know, a lot of people misinterpret it, and then that's why you find a whole bunch of GT Sport lobbies with uh, comfort hard tires, comfort soft tires, just sliding around, or you'll find them on racing tires, like F1 tires, <laughs> going around the corners, thinking they're going fast, but it's just the grip of the tires. You show me, they're not really, they're not really pushing the car. But that's the whole thing. What initially was showing them pushing the car to their limits pushing the cars and themselves to the limits but people want to skip that and drive faster cars get faster grip i mean i said faster grip <laughs> more grip on their tires and just think they're going fast <laughs> want to get the best the best advantage they want to drive an remm fd against an a86 and like oh but they do it in this and we're like ah oh, but you don't understand the mountain passes, bro. The mountain pass is a different story. Uh, if you could do body modifications and stuff <laughs> that that's necessary in GT Sport, if you do that, then I'd be like, alright. But no, all you can really do is just drop the weight and then add some power and then tweak the diff in the suspension. That's it. You can't really put a cage. You can't really do nothing, bro. You can't. Even GT6 or whatever has some sort of aero modification work that you can do. To the cars to make it perform better in gt6 gt5 especially but you can't do that you can't do that in sport it was esports focused gt sport esport bro it was focused on that and they can't have a whole bunch of different complicated very variants of cars with different hidden stuff like like a turbo or all that other stuff hidden under the hood and all the extra arrows and bodywork when it's supposed to be a balance of performance, BOP races, FIA certified things where they have manufacturers and all that, you can't do that, you know? But uh, hopefully in GT7, they realize, you know, they, well, they teased and said that it was supposed to be more like the rest of the franchise. And they're gonna put that all in there. So we'll see. And I've been dissecting the trailer and figuring stuff out, but we need more information. I don't even know if, uh, I don't know, bro. I don't even know if con the track maker is going to be in there. I doubt it. It's going to be at release. It's, the game is still a long time away. It gives them more time so we can be hopeful. At least it's Deep Forest, but then again, Deep Forest isn't even nothing I'm hyped for. I just want the, the track maker, bro. You get the track maker, that will bring life to the game for years. You see, people was even playing GT6. <laughs> Even GT5, I think, they got the servers up somehow. 
but even like a few years ago, I think they cut the, the servers off a few years ago, right? Two years ago, something like that. People were still playing it, bro. <laughs> People were still playing it until they cut it off. That's how good it was. It it was still plenty of people playing it when the server was on my as the custom tracks and all that. Anyways, I'm rambling. The point was uh, the speed drift thing, but this is the tune. I gave her all the tune. You could try it out, see how it works. But then again, it's not gonna be like a. Oh, okay. He showed me how it is. Let's do it. Yay! No, it's. You have to work really, really freaking hard. Like, trust me, I've been working really hard on my technique and everything since GT5 and when I got on board. And I've just been training really hard, bro. And then this track came along. It's really fun in GT Sport. I trained really hard here. But even then, even still, like, playing a set of course and everything, it messes it up because now I'm training on a set of course. So, and it's like real toge and I'm trying to, you know, master that. And then I come back to here. And then now I gotta get used to the steering and everything and physics. And it's like, ah. But if you put your mind to it, bro, and you focus on this, you can do wonderful things. Trust me, like you can do beautiful things. I wish I had my replays from GT5, GT6 when I had my own custom tracks. And you could just see me speed drifting the entire track and pulling away from people. And they're like, how are you doing that? It is just mad practice, bro. When and I try to have more uh, videos in the sort of course where you see me speed drifting. But then again, I'm still new to that game. I'm still trying to adjust to the physics. When it comes to Gran Turismo, we've been playing Gran Turismo for years. Like, for years, bro, since GT5. I had GT5 Prologue. It's been years, you know, in GT. You get used to the physics. And then even though it's a different game, it's just an improvement, a little improvement on the physics. It's not too crazy, you know. So you adapt and you get used to it. I said, of course, it's completely new to me. I, it's completely new, so I'm still trying to get used to that. And I'm playing on the controller. I have a wheel. It's just my circumstances. I can't really use it whenever I want. So there's not that much space. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. But moral of the story is you gotta really put the work in. You gotta really try, but it's not. It's not gonna be no one and done thing. Oh, I looked on YouTube. I saw a tune. Now I'm fast. Granted, the tune, I, the tune I gave you is probably fast, because I've been working on this car for a long time. But still, you're not going to be able to just instantly speed drift. You still got to hone your technique and you still got to get all that right. Oh yeah, another thing about the tune, try it out at 200 horsepower first. At 200 horsepower and... Uh, and uh, 1969 times. Try it at these specs first. Then master rotating the car and all that, and then add more horsepower. You get used to uh, get used to that. But I think I'm gonna wrap the video. Well, the video is about to go on for like an hour or something. Yeah, it's almost it's almost been an hour. So uh. I'm gonna leave it at that, and then I uh, hope this helps you out. Just remember to subscribe, like, if you like this video, you know, all that good stuff. Just stick around, I got a whole bunch of more content on the way. More driving, more videos from lobbies and pictures. Oh, and support me on Patreon if you want 4K wallpapers, phone wallpapers, all that. And if I get enough people, I can do uh, posters. I can give out posters every month or whatever, every three months, I think it is. And a whole bunch of other merch. In my Instagram, YTF, our car, same thing. I'm trying to get that to 10K so I can start linking everything from my other websites on my Instagram. You can see everything right there. And that'll work out. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. It's crazy if you made it this far. <laughs> this is probably a long video, but thanks for sticking around. I appreciate y'all. So, later.